Hello, welcome to episode 28 of the Harry Potter painting series. Uh, this one we're doing Mr. Goyle. So, uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. Okay, then, Mr. Goyle. Um, I'm going to do the skin first, and it's a 50 50 mix of um, Citadel's Cadian Flesh and Kisler Flesh. Just after a nice coverage, um, I'll probably take two coats for this to work. There's one. Okay, so that's two coats of the flesh done. I'm going in with a wash now using Reitland Flesh Shade. And uh, just cover all the flashy areas really and try and pull it in the um, pull it in the deepest areas so it collects uh, the eye sockets and the lips and the cheekbones. And it can go under the chin as well. Underneath the arms. Oh, while that um, flesh wash is drying, we'll go into the trousers. Um, German grey, two drops of paint, two drops of water, and two drops of flow improver. Same drill as most of the students, really. I'm trying to keep everything the same, seeing as it's a school uniform. Pull the paint down. Can't remember if I did the shoes the same colour, but we will. It's highly likely that they have dark shoes on. Jumper now, uh, Swarp Fiend Grey with the Hogwarts Magic Mix. Uh, the well, two drops of paint, two drops of water, well, two and a half drops of water, a drop of flow improver. Put the paint down. This has to be one of my favourite greys, along with German grey. <laughs> There's a little touch of purple in there, or lilac-y colour. Try and pull it in the creases. Okay, so um, everything's dried. Um, while I was waiting, I did the skin. Um, if you're wondering how we do the skin, if you look back at, um, I think it's episode number 17, where we did the, the face of um, Lucius. Um, use exactly the same techniques as that. So if you got any uh, any questions, let me know anyway. But, um, it's pretty straightforward to follow. So the skin is done. Um, I've put a coat of ivory on the shirt collar as well, and a little bit of brown on the hair. So this is the stage that we're at now. What what I want to do now is. The, the grey on the trousers didn't really work to my liking, so I'm going to do a bit more work on that. So I've mixed up some more German grey 
and I'm just going to push it into the shadows so it's, it's more of an intense dark color rather than the the light of the you know the zenithal priming so that's the plan anyway so I'll get on with that now so like I said German grey uh, nice and thin and what I'm going to do is push it up into the, the dark part of the creases because that's where the darkest bit is going to be. It's just to get some more uh, contrast. Let's come in from the side there. I'm trying not to get on the the light areas near the top part of the crease, so it leaves um, it leaves a nice highlight. I just need to work on the the contrast and the shadows now. So I'll, I'll leave that dry. Um, it's probably it's quite warm today, so I think it may be dry already. So I'll do the back again, second coat, and I'll decide then whether to go darker. So good to say, it's about one part paint, uh, maybe more than a one part water. So you're looking at in between a wash and a glaze really. So it should dry quite nicely. Should, he says. I'm swapping angles on my brush all the time. I'll leave the sides of the trousers because they look okay. It's just the part where it's all creased. So a second coat on the front. Notice I'm going up there and not down towards the light area. So I'm, I'm pushing up into the shadow and get a nice bit of contrast there. Okay, we'll leave that for a bit to dry properly and then uh, we'll have a look. Fairly, fairly happy with that. So I've mixed a little bit of uh, German grey with a, um, I think it's a blue grey pale that I use um, for my light grey. So I'm just going to catch the, the top of each highlight there. Just use the absolute tip of your brush, or if you want to use the side of your brush, you may get away with it. Just catch each highlight. Maybe the side there, because there's a nice crease in the trousers there. He obviously plugged his iron in when he ironed them, unlike me. From my forces days, he used to have. Uh, Creases all over the shop. I wasn't very good ironing. I'm going to leave that dry and uh, maybe revisit it. I think it looks okay, but we'll see. All right, decided to push the contrast a bit, so I've added a bit of black to the German grey and I've I've added some water to it, so it's it's like a glaze consistency now. And I'm just going to go into the shadows 
just to reinforce them so at the bottom of each crease it might look quite stark now but when it dries you'll, you'll hardly see it so don't worry too much about that and I'll, I'll do the line between the jumper and the trousers done the back. Let me put some more in there actually. There we are. Okay so oh, back to the jumper. Um, what I've done I've got um, three colours on my palette now. I've got warp fiend grey and then a mix of that half and half with slanesh grey and then slash grey on its own and uh, we'll start to do some highlights on the jumper now. If you remember back to the um, the twins episode, I think it's episode 13 looking at my list um, where we did the, f I think that was the first one we did jumpers on, I'm not sure. But that that was just uh, Warp Fiend Grey with um, the uh, you know the flow improver that was the first time we used that and it turned out perfect the first time you know it's uh, this is a bit hit and miss this one so if if you wanted to tidy it up this this is the process that I'd use so I'm going with the the fifty fifty mix first and it's quite thin um, if you can see that just keep an eye on that and see what it dries like because um, we're going to use that now to put a highlight on the top of each crease on the jumper. You can see it's starting to fade now, it's not as bold as it was when you first applied it. Um, so that again it's about 50-50 paint and water. And I'll just pick out the tops of the folds and try and keep, you know when the brush stops, try and keep that um, towards the end of a crease and not in the middle so it'll look a bit silly and then I'll put a bit there as well so for the top of the jumper it's going to be lighter obviously because it's uh, we're using the xerithal priming method so I'm going to straight to the slanesh grey now and I'll put it on his side so you can see it. I'll just check it's in focus. Okay, ready to go. So I'll apply it there. It might be easier doing it on the back, I think. But what I'll do, I'll go with a 50 50 mix then and I'll put some, there's like a transition in there. So it's light at the top, like a mid-tone in the middle, and then lighter, uh, darker at the bottom. We'll, we'll do it here, I think. I've done one coat already. So i get the slanesh grey up the top, and I'll push the pigment up the way. And because it's quite thin, you can move it around quite a lot. So we've got a line there. So what I'll do, I won't bother cleaning my brush, I'll just put it straight into the 50-50 mix wick off the excess on a on a paper towel and then try and blend them together there so we've got another line there so what I'll do I'll go straight into the warp fiend grey and blend it there so you should get a nice transition from the bottom to the top there. That's the plan. So I'll carry on doing the sleeves and then I'm just picking out the the tops of the creases and then we'll come back. Okay so I'm fairly happy with the the jumper now. Um, if you wanted to go a bit further add a little bit of white to the slanesh grain and do another another highlight. Um, I've done it a wee bit up at the shoulders and I've, I've just blended it back in so you can't really uh, see any 
you know, there's like a nice transition there, so it's not too bad. Um, so what I'm going to do now is the, I'm going to attempt to do the eyes, or show you how I do the eyes. So I'll just get it into position now, and I'll get it in focus and I'll crack on. So I've, I've got some ivory ready on my palette. Um, I'll just refocus and we'll, we'll have a, give it a go. Okay, I think we're there. So as I said, I've got ivory. Um, I'm using a double, I think no, it's a zero brush. Um, Windsor & Newton Series 7. And what I do is, if I can see it, I'm going to just do a line within the, the brown bit of the eye. It may take a couple of strokes, just nice and gently using a tip of your brush to get it in there. Um, apologies for that, I don't know what happened there, but yeah, just um, use the absolute tip of your brush. Pretend, um, let's, let's do something different. Okay, this is slightly exaggerated, but that is your darkened eye sockets that we've got here. And I use um, like a dark brown for that. Or if, if you're happy with just the Reichland flesh shade to darken it, you know, that's fine. But I like to go a little bit darker and I put a, a dark line. Um, not necessarily fill the eye socket, but just at the top of the eye socket by the eyebrow, just to darken things down a bit. And then I get my ivory and I use the tip of the brush. And just move the brush slightly downwards so it doesn't fill the whole area of the brown so I'll do, I'll do it again here and this is where the brush with the the point really helps so you start and if you can move it gently that way and gently that way just to fill it out a bit because you're just using the absolute tip of the brush there and then when you're happy with that and it dries, you get your black or dark blue or whatever colour you want. And again, tip of the brush and I'll go towards the top and pull it down. And you should some nice eyes then. Okay, okay so that's the eyes done. Um, what I've got is a bit of um, Scale 75's uh, Merm Green. It's quite a nice uh, darkish green colour. I'm going to be using that, well, I'll see how we get on with it um, for the, uh, the Slytherin colours. So I've thinned it down about 50 50 water these um the the fantasy colors from uh scale 75 are, are more designed for blending so you need, i don't think you need as much water when you're watering these down so um sorry I just knocked the camera what i've done i've done the tie and i've done the v of the uh the jumper as well um so i think we're getting there uh just need to do the hair now so i'm gonna go back to that um i think i used a like a flat earth or a, a mid brown like um uh, xv88 for that and then i'm just gonna highlight up from there so I'll do that okay so i just checked back and it was actually mourn fang brown um the gw color so i just gave it another coat um to sort it out and then i'm going to use uh scrag brown now to do the highlight so i'll just push it start about three quarters of the way down and just push it up towards the crown of the head and for the crown well, the, the bit that I can see at the front, I'm just going to dab on, pick out areas. And then 
when that dries get a, a lighter colour again I think it's um, a quick check death claw brown they're all nice uh, ready ready browns because I think he's uh, it's quite fair on the top so I'm just going to dab here and there to pick out some highlights and we'll leave it at that I think okay okay the hair is looking okay um, nice uh, a little bit of contrast up there. What I've done, I've uh, I used the Merm Green again to redefine the tie um, because it was quite thin. I thought another layer would uh, do it good. And then just picked out a couple of stripes with ivory on the tie. And I think they are almost there. Um, I can't think of anything else to do, so... We'll get some nice pictures done and we'll do a wrap up. Okay, here we go, Mr. Goyle on his base. Um, it's another one off the list. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, I hope you get something out of it. Um, if there's anything you don't understand, get in touch in the comments below and uh, I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Um, I'm thinking of um, increasing the level now in, in some of the videos, otherwise, we're, we're going to end up just repeating. Uh, things over and over so if particularly if things don't go wrong with the first coat you know with the um with the flow improver mix um like we did today with the um uh, the extra uh shades and highlights on the trousers you know i'll go through things like that and then maybe extra highlight techniques and so we'll see how that goes and um yeah, as I say, yeah, if, uh, if you liked it, please like it. Subscribe to the channel for uh, yeah, that little bell down in the right-hand corner. And uh, you'll get notifications every time I post a new video. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's it for now. We'll uh, see you in the next episode. Cheers.